Hey guys, I'm back. So, <clears throat> as as I as I was doing, I was collecting 100 beans, and I cut that out because I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see me going back and forth having to do that. So since I left that part non-commentated, I might as well just upload that whole entire part as a as a um, separate part called like entitled Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, um, where to get lots of beans or something like that. Of course, that this that's for the GameCube version, and I, it really it's like the only best place to actually get more beans. I mean, if there's a better place, then then um, you can leave a video response to that video when I upload it. And of course, if there's a better place in another version than like the PS2 version, then it's probably in, in an area I can't do. Wait, what the? Where's the gnome dunking? Hold on, let me go this way. Then come right back, because is this a dream come true? It's a dream come true! I don't have to do the gnome dunking any- or the gnome tossing anymore. If this is true, I mean up to 40 beans, then- Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Now it's just racing. The number one thing I actually would not mind doing. Sure. It will cost 10 beans. So, if this is true, no tossing is done. But, of course, the real question is, whatever cards I get here, and, of course, the cards that I still need to collect to actually trade with the students, will it actually be enough to get 100%? Because if not, then I may actually have to connect my Game Boy Advance if I can still find the remaining one that I used to use around the house. If not, then... I don't know, 100% may not be possible for this game. But hey, at least I tried. I mean, this is much more fun going through rains rather than throwing gnomes through rains. One this time, Potter. Here's a famous witches and wizards card. Number 27, Mirabella Plunkett. Actually, I think there's actually one student that was actually asking for this card. Uh, what was I about to say? One fans, one, one fancy. Okay, one no, one thing that I noticed is that um. When you're doing the gnome tossing, you have to run to pick up the card, but when you're doing the flying, you actually get given a card. So, anyway, Mirabella Punkett, so she's lived to be over a hundred, or possibly whenever she died, or if she still exists, is unknown. Famous for falling in love with a merman in Lange, uh, Longman, wait, on holiday. When her parents forbid her to marry him, she transformed herself into a hand dog and was never seen again. Hmm. It almost seems like a twisted version of the Little Mermaid, if you ask me. All right. Fancy another race, Let's Harry. do some this more flying. Me again, it'll cost ten beans. Talk about being worth it. I didn't even go through the rain that was behind me. You know, it's always so irritating when they're in front of you, but it's like, don't worry. I mean, the more rains you go through, you'll eventually get ahead of the student, and you will win eventually. It's like impossible to lose this unless, of course, you suck at controlling and flying. Like that, but yeah. <laughs> Man, there's like more rains around. It's ridiculous. But yeah, he was like well way behind me. Winning, Harry. Have a wizard card. Well, at least this guy Number ain't gender confused. Artemisia Lufkin. All right, so live to be under a hundred. So first witch to become minister for magic.
All right. I'm so glad that I don't have to do any more gnome tossing, but racing, yes. All right. Fancy race, Harry. All right, not gender confused. At least this is cheap compared to the gnome dunking or tossing. Urgh. Okay, the difference between dunking and tossing is that gnome dunking is where you have to throw them into the lake at a certain distance. And then the gnome uh, tossing is where you have to throw them into a, a, a bunch of brains. But yeah, I'm glad the gnome tossing is done with and over with because I it was like a living hell trying to get through that. I'm trying to collect beans all the time, trying to get them through the rains. It's just I hate the gnome tossing. Gnome dunking, I don't mind. Flying, I like. Oh, short. You won this time, Potter. Here's a famous witches and wizards card. Number thirty-one, Balfour Blaine. Okay, so one student was asking for Balfour Blaine. So live to be under a hundred. Establish the committee on experimental charms. You won last time we raced. Think you can win again? It'll cost 15 beans. Alright, a little more expensive, but eh, it's worth it. You know what? If Harry had the fireball right now, he would be like bursting through this. And he would be going much more faster because there was a dragon trade chasing him. Whoa! Did that person just hit the pillar and then just fall down? That was funny. Anyway, we're going at the same speed, so I have to go through a bunch more rains in order to get past her. Okay, she was much more closer this time. Number 33, Bowman Marjorie Banks. Yeah, that's a quite a long name. So, uh, pretty much lived to be um, 103, pioneer of herbology and collector of many rare and magical flowers, and also discovered the gillyweed. You won last time we raced. Think you can win again? It'll cost 15 beans. At least this is much more entertaining. <laughs> okay, Ju judging by how soon I'll be finished 100% in this game, I would have expected it to be lots of sessions, but I think I might as well just do the rest of this game solo. So for those of you who are like, but Nitsa, I wanted to co-commentate in this game, it's just not fair. Well, sorry. I like being a dick that way. Okay, no, I don't like being a dick, but yeah. You won well, Potter. Have this wizard card. Number 34, Donahan Tremlett. Okay, so bass player with the popular wizarding band, the Weird Sisters. All right. Huh, I, uh, I couldn't talk to her, even though it says talk to. Okay, so there's still more racing. Oh, this is my absolute favorite area. Yes. I mean, this area is like so huge to explore. This feels like more freedom. It's Harry Potter, isn't it? Fancy a race? It'll cost 20 beans. 20 beans. Don't worry. I will come back to you. I just want to explore this area. I mean, this area is like a huge area to explore. It's like, wow, open freedom. Because you can never explore a lot of Hogwarts. I mean, the best chances of you exploring is pretty much um, is pretty much just you know flying but to actually get a really huge open area where you can walk down here walk along there and go down to the boathouse it's like you know what don't bother racing right now explore this area I mean feeling the freedom in this game is something that it lacks so 
So you know what? Just explore the area while you're at it. Okay, so... I know in the previous session there was the speed up issue and of course it's hard to tell from your point of view considering I slowed down uh, some of the clips and yet it still looks sped up and stuff. Oh, Harry kind of fell there. So yeah. We're quite far away from the person we're supposed to be challenging. Doesn't look like there's any boats up there. It's hard to tell from my view. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any boats up there. Anyway. Yeah, I believe the boathouse is the meeting point of where the um, first years get off. Because the first years ride boats while the um, years 2 and 7 actually ride... Um, like a carriage what, that is being pulled by a bunch of terrestrials, which can only be seen by people who have seen death. And of course, Harry, apparently he has not seen death, and yet, you know, he was in the same room that his mother died, and, you know, it's like, doesn't really make sense considering he's witnessed death before, and yet, really, the death that haunts him is Cedric Diggory's death, and that's pretty much when he starts seeing, seeing them. And then, of course, Luna, she saw death when she was nine. So it doesn't really make sense. So anyway, let's talk to this guy and race him. So yeah, when you're in this area, just have fun and explore it. It's Harry Potter, isn't it? Fancy a race? It'll cost 20 beans. All right. Judging that the beans are gonna only get higher and higher, I may have to go back and get more beans, and don't worry, I will cut it out for you guys. I'm worried about my, uh, my, uh, laptop, like, blacking out. I mean, not blacking out, but going on screensaver. Because last time I let it go on screensaver, it caused a screensaver glitch, which was mentioned in the, uh, session of Harry, er, not Harry Potter, um, uh, what session was it, um, uh, Super Mario Sunshine. Yeah, it's ridiculous how easy it is to meet these students. Well done, Harry. Here's a wizard card. At least you don't have to worry about. Bowman Wright. Okay, famous for developing the Golden Snitch. Interesting. So yeah, at least you don't have to worry about bludgers or or retarded little opposing opponents that, like, bump into you while you're playing the game. You won last time we raced. Think you can win again? It'll cost 20 beans. Okay, I still have enough for one more race, so if there's still more, then I won't have enough for it. So if there's still more racing after this, which I think there is, then I will have to go back in to get some more beans. You know, you think, um, you think uh, Hogwarts wouldn't really allow this. Unless, of course, it's flying practice or Quidditch practice. Of course, Quidditch practice would have to be taking place on the stadium itself. And flying practice, well, it's for the first few years. I mean, I'm not sure if flying practice is for, like, just the first years or something. Or if it's for, like, more. I mean, in this game, um... We had to do it for our second year, but I'm not sure if that was actually in the book. I'll have to read the book all over again, and of course do a little bit of research to actually find that question out. Wow, I barely just made first place. Well done for winning, Harry. Have a wizard card. Okay. Number 84, Roland Keg. Okay, this is one per... Okay, one student asked for this, and you can tell that there's a little glitch here. And don't worry, that's pretty much just um, us getting a full pentagon, which basically makes our health go higher. Okay, so this guy, who is pretty much um, still living in the present, of course around the time that this game is made, um, who knows if he's dead in 2012. I mean, he would be over 100 years old now. So, president of the English Gobstones team. 
chances are he's probably dead, unless of course he is living over a hundred. I'm confident I'll beat you this time, Harry. Let's have another race. It'll cost 30 beans. Okay, so this time it's 30 beans, but since we don't have enough, we can't race him right now. Alright. So, so we still have that area to explore, but I'm not going to explore that area. I mean, I did it once. There's no reason for me to do it again. I mean, it's it feels good to get freedom in this game. I mean, and that's the one thing that this game lacks. I mean, you think exploring Hogwarts itself would actually be enough. Actually, an interesting fact, I did play the Philosopher's Stone version on the GameCube, and the thing is, you can actually explore Hogwarts freely, but in this game, you get shortcuts. And when you go through the doors, you don't get loading sequence. Instead, you're instantly in the area, which is actually really awesome. So what I'm going to do is actually trade with a few students if I can and then get the remaining beans.